Hi, and welcome to a comparison between the Korg Electribe 2 and the Novation Circuit. The two devices sit in a pretty similar niche. They're priced relatively similarly, but for quite a few things, they go about it in a completely different way. Before we dive into the details, I think one of the most important things as you make your decision is how they sound. Let me play you a few factory patterns from each. First, let's start with the similarities. Both are groove boxes designed for fast creation of music. They've got headphone and audio left right out jacks, they've got MIDI in and outs, they can work on batteries, uh, and they can also be MIDI controllers for your DAW. They both have a built in synthesizer, a built in sample player for samples and drums, and systems for motion sequencing of effects and sequencing overall. One important thing to know before we start, there are two Electribe versions uh, in two different colors each. There's Synth uh, Electribe and there's a Sampler. Uh, there's a whole video that I made about the differences between them, so I won't cover that here. I'll only touch on it when it's relevant. So let's start with the differences. First, a general overview of the hardware. The Electribes have a slightly higher price point. They can store up to 250 patterns of one to four bars each. There's a little asterisk there because on this channel I show a way to extend that beyond four bars, but that's using an external app, so the hardware itself can only reach up to four bars per pattern. And the system can play up to 24 voices simultaneously, whether it's a synth voice or a sample. And in comparison, the competitor on the right uh, is priced a little bit cheaper, uh, can only hold 32 sessions or patterns, but they can be up to eight bars each and it contains uh, two Nova synthesizers, each with two oscillators and up to six note polyphony, and four drums or sample parts. Let's continue looking at the hardware itself. The Electribe has 16 velocity sensitive pads. It has a prominent LCD screen. It has an XY pad for track scale and effects control, and we'll cover this in detail in a bit. It has an audio in jack, uh, which allows you to input audio and apply effects to it. And the reason you might want to do that is if you sequence external devices but still want to apply device effects to them. Uh, it has 3.5 millimeter sync in and out jacks, which you can uh, use to play with Volcas and synchronize. Uh, and it has an SD card for backups and sample import. Of course, the sample import being only relevant to the Electribe sampler. All those things don't exist on the circuit. On the other hand, the circuit has its own advantages. From a hardware perspective, it has 32 RGB pads. These pads are really fun and easy to use, much better than the electrons, but they're not velocity sensitive, so if that's important to you, take that into consideration. And having 32 of them provides you with a much better canvas for playing. The circuit also has eight knobs or macros for controlling various sound parameters. Each of these knobs has an RGB LED next to it, which isn't as useful as seeing a parameter on an LCD screen, but still gives you an idea of where you are regarding to the knob parameter. Circuit also has a mini speaker, which the Electribes don't, but it really doesn't do the music any justice to use it. You're better off using a headphone or speakers. A huge advantage for the circuit is the accompanying software suite. Circuit comes both with free software and online services that let you back up your synth patches, 
uh, your sequences and samples. Another amazing piece of software that's available for the circuit, both in a free version and for a reasonably priced pro version, is a synth patch editor from a company called Isotonic. And there's a VST version of it as well. We'll talk about this a bit later. So that's it for a general overview. Now let's dive deeper into each of the particular aspects of both machines. We'll start with the synth engine. The Electribe lets you sequence up to 16 different parts, whether synth or sample. Each of these parts can play up to four different notes but you only have 24 separate voices, so you don't get four times 16, rather you get up to uh, 24 different voices. And I say up to because some things like certain oscillators or effects can take more than one voice. Now, once you start applying effects to your oscillator or sample, those individual part effects or filters only live in the current pattern you're working on. Uh, there's, there's no concept such as cross pattern patches like there is in the circuit. That said, there are great onboard uh, dedicated knobs for each of the oscillator, filter, modulations, uh, LFOs, both uh, uh, amplitude envelopes and filter envelopes and insert effects. Uh, so if you're into creating your own sounds, you'll find a very nice playground on the Electribe itself. And I've created a detailed tutorial about Electribe sound, sound design elsewhere on this channel. Uh, so I won't cover that in depth here. There should be a link to it uh, in the description. The circuit, on the other hand, only gives you two synth parts, but each of those parts gives you six notes polyphony per part. And while you can't create patches on the device itself, you can do that using the accompanying software and you can download patches from the internet uh, and then use them across all the patterns uh, in your, uh, on your device. Okay, let's dive deeper into the sound making capabilities of both these machines. The Electribes come with hundreds of different core sounds that you can apply effects to. Over 500 for the sampler and over 350 for the synth version of the Electribe. One of those sounds is just a starting point for sound design. As we talked about before, you can apply filters, envelopes, LFOs, and effects to them. The Electribe 2 sampler gives you 16 synth oscillators and three different filters, and the Electribe 2, uh, not the sampler version, gives you 54 different synth oscillators and 16 different uh, low pass, high pass, and band pass filters. You can apply 72 different modulations and LFOs with dedicated speed and depth knobs to each of the sounds. You have onboard knobs to control, to control amplitude and filter envelopes. And you have uh, dedicated onboard control for controlling whether the, um, the synth you're using will uh, work uh, monophonically, polyphonically. You control its glide uh, and its pitch directly with onboard knobs. And finally, you can apply effects to incoming audio, whether just audio playing back or audio that you sequence on an external device. The circuit, on the other hand, comes with 64 built-in synth patches, which you can replace or change using uh, the software, but you need a PC for that. And you can use the macro knobs to change various parameters of the synth. The actual patch parameters that those knobs affect are determined by the person that designed the patch. And that to me is one of the most frustrating things about the circuit because every patch has different knobs controlling different things depending on who created the patch and, and what they wanted to implement in that patch. And since there's no LCD screen, there's no way for you to know what knob does what until you start turning it. Furthermore, if the designer of the patch didn't d decide to add a certain control that you want, there's no way for you to access it. For example, if there's no decay assigned to one of the knobs, you won't be able to control the decay or release of a note. Um, or if you want to take a monophonic patch and play it polyphonically, there's no way to do that. There's no way to go from mono to poly and vice versa um, on board. You need to use the external software for that. And since there's no LCD screen with patch names, I often find myself going patch by patch looking for a, a polyphonic patch um, or for a certain kind of sound, whereas if there was some sort of display, it would have been much easier to find what I want quicker. 
Now, if you're willing to connect a computer to your circuit and learn the isotonic editor, you're in for a treat. You get a crazy amount of synth controls, uh, way beyond the Electrive, by the way, and you can create some very, very interesting sounds. Uh, but the software does have a steep learning curve. Uh, I think it's, it's worth the time to invest uh, to learn it, and if you don't have any objection to connecting a computer to your circuit, you can have a lot of fun with it and you can create your own patches. Okay, let's talk about playback of drums and samples. The Electrives let you easily uh, pitch and play melodies with samples. The Electrive 2 has a fixed library of samples. And the Electrive 2 sampler lets you add uh, 99 seconds of new samples, or if you're willing to erase some of the factory samples, up to 273 seconds of mono samples. You can load up stereo samples and they'll take up double the space. You can sample through the audio in jack or import samples from an SD card and you can easily play melodies with the samples you create. You can also create uh, loops within samples so you can create notes with ongoing sustain uh, using a looping function. For extended samples you've got really nice slicing features to chop up a sample based on uh, beats or transients. As far as the circuit is concerned you get uh, 64 different samples at any given time. As per the synth, I just wish there was an LCD screen so I could know which was which without actually playing them. There's no audio in jack or SD card for loading up samples, but putting samples on the circuit is pretty easy um, with the software you get from Novation. You get up to 60 seconds mono of samples total. And while there is a pitch knob to pitch samples up and down, there's no easy way to play melodies with samples. And there's a little asterisk there because um, if you've seen other videos on this channel, I've provided two ways to do that. But there are sort of workarounds. I would have loved to have this capability on board. Maybe we'll get it one day in the future with a firmware update. Finally, you can only one-shot play samples. Uh, so if you want to create a loop within a sample in a way that, say, a trumpet will start with a certain sample attack and then repeat um, as long as you're pressing a key repeat with uh, sustain on a particular loop in, in a part of the sample, you can't do that, uh, unfortunately, on the circuit. On to additional sampling capabilities. On the Electrimes, you get up to 16 different sample parts. Remember, you can use a part either for a synth or for a sample. But unlike the circuit, where you can use different samples on the same track or part, um, with the Electrive, you can only w use uh, one uh, type of drum or sample part with the exception of sample slices. I won't get into that now, but check this channel uh, for more explanations about that. You get full sound design control for samples, so filters, modulations, LFOs, amplitude envelopes, uh, filter envelopes, all the effects, all those can be applied uh, to samples. On the Electribe 2 sampler, you can also set uh, sample start, loop uh, points, and reverse them as well. And once you import a sample, you can use it across all the patterns you create. On the circuit, on the other hand, you get four drum parts, drum or sample parts. But with sample flipping, you can use more than one sample per track. In terms of sound design for samples, you get relatively limited control. Uh, you've got four knobs per sample part, and you can control pitch, decay, distortion, and filter effects um, per sample. All the 64 samples you have on board are global, which means you can use any of them in any of the sessions or parts you create. Okay, let's move on to part and master effects. The Electribe lets you apply 32 master effects, and you've got XY touchpad control for each and every one of them. And per part, you have a button that lets you select whether or not you want to send it to master effects or not. In terms of high pass, low pass, and band pass filters, you can apply that either per part or as part of the master effects. Beside the master effects, which you can either turn on or off per part, you've got 38 effects types per part, and you can choose one effect type for each of the parts, and you can also control it 
uh, with the modulation knob. Also unique to the Electribe, uh, you can control pan on a per part basis. All the knobs, by the way, you can modulate uh, over time as part of your sequence controls. Let's move on to what's special about the circuit. You've got a big knob on the top right, which is both low pass and high pass filter, a master effect to all your tracks. And you've got three effects types per part. You can add uh, and control different types of delays, reverbs, and you can also sidechain each of the synth tracks based on the drum in track one. If you're willing to dive into the isotonic software, you get substantially more effects. Let's move on to sequencing. In terms of the Electribe, you've got only four bars to play with. There's a little asterisk there because you can chain uh, patterns into a, a longer chain. Um, and there's also an app I've shown on this uh, channel that allows you to play eight bars per loop with a little muting trick. But overall, there are four bars per pattern. You can store a total of 250 uh, four bar patterns on the device. With a sequencer, you can sequence up to 16 different parts with four notes in each part. You have a pretty wide variety of scales to experiment with, 32 scales. And you've got a groove fu uh, function which uh, lets you add uh, variety very simply in terms of spacing between notes and a velocity of notes. The circuit's advantage, on the other hand, is that it has eight bars per session. And it has a really cool feature that lets you choose the sequence of bars you play of, among those eight bars. So you can play, for example, the two middle ones, the four last ones, uh, and so on. It doesn't have a feature, on the other hand, to automatically chain sessions. Um, and you, you have uh, only 32 sessions in total. And in terms of synth sequencing, you only have two synth tracks, but you can uh, sequence six notes polyphonically on each of those tracks. In terms of sequencing according to scales, you've got 16 scales, which I think is pretty much enough. And it has an excellent chromatic mode where you can arrange um, the notes similar to a piano keyboard. And you're familiar with, if you're familiar with that layout, that's very convenient. Finally, in terms of uh, naming sessions, obviously you can't name them because there is no display, but you can change the colors uh, for each session and find your, your way around that way. Okay, let's talk about actual sequencing. It's very easy to sequence drums on the Electribe. Um, in terms of sequencing notes, you've got a menu-based system, which I think is, is way too complex, and I've shown a workaround uh, uh, to get over that limitation of, of diving into a menu to set notes, but uh, basically you've got to deal with the menu if you, uh, if you don't use any external hack. Um, and of course you can record live as well. Um, and if you want to sequence external gear, you've got a uh, 16-track MIDI control out, uh, again, up to four notes per track. On the circuit, I think that's where it has the upper hand on both uh, easy drum sequencing and step synth sequencing. That's how easy it is to sequence drums, and sequencing synth is just as easy. So sequencing music on the circuit is super easy. Sequencing good music is a whole other story. Of course, you can record uh, live. The pads aren't velocity sensitive, but uh, you can play your, your tune uh, and then manually adjust the velocity later on. Um, and it has 
two tracks going out to, to MIDI, up to six notes on each track. I call the last comparison category miscellaneous. The things the Electribe has that the uh, circuit doesn't is a chord mode, uh, which is kind of fun. You can play with a touchpad uh, for a, a gate arp and touch scale mode, and it sounds something like this. You can give your patterns names and see that on the LCD screen. Uh, you've got an Ableton export function, which is really useful if you want to edit the individual parts as WAV files. And you've got an undo function, which works only on certain things, uh, so it's uh, limited in its use. On the other hand, the circuit has uh, great documentation, uh, including the Mininova manual, which I recommend reading if you want to learn more about creating synth patches. And I already mentioned before, in terms of software that the device comes with, um, there's great software for backing up your patches, your samples, your sequences. Um, and there's a great app by Isotonic and a VST to create uh, synth patches. And then the USB connection on the circuit also can serve uh, for backing up data. I personally find that more convenient than an SD card. Just take a USB cable and hook your circuit up to your computer. So what's the bottom line? Well, the reason this video came out so long is because it was important for me to show you everything that each of the devices has to offer. Uh, you know, different people care about different things, so choose what's uh, right for you, have fun, maybe get one of each, and sell the one you don't like. I'm going to let the Electribe and Circuit play us out. If this video was useful for you, hit like, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.